Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And it's time for another dose, daily dose of Dismal Disney. Yeah, you need a daily in Double, there. a double, double daily dose, Pretty much. It's, it's like It's like triple daily sometimes. I mean, it's... <laughs> I can't keep up with all the negative Disney news. So we're going to talk about Disney being an example, uh, being made an example of what not to do. Yeah, what not to do. What not to do. Uh, there's this interesting article out there in the Wall Street Journal that Disney's clash with Florida has CEOs on alert. Mm -hmm. Basically, if you're going to get into politics, you need to be a little more careful. Don't, don't do what Disney. Uh, don't do what Disney did because we can see what it's doing. Uh, what it's doing to their stock. Mm -hmm. They've wiped out two years of gains. Now, disclaimer, it's not just because of the Florida situation. There no. are a lot, of, a lot of reasons why Disney stock is down. Uh, some of it has nothing to do with Disney. It has everything to do with Netflix and the anticipation that Disney's numbers are going to be down next quarter. Some too. of it's because they keep doubling down on stupid things like Genie Plus and people hate it and they they keep pushing it and people are canceling trips because they're like, this is stupid. Galactic Star Cruise are stupid. Your prices are stupid. You're dumb, Disney. You're, You're just stupid, stupid poopy pants. That's right. Poopy head. Poopy head, That's Disney. Right. Anyway, we're going to talk about this uh, and then we're going to talk about how some other companies are learning and it seems like they're they're kind of learning from Disney. I think uh, David Zaslav uh, coming into Warner Brothers Discovery and gutting the place. Yeah. I mean, he is canceling like everything. And he's using the merger as an excuse to get rid of dead weight, uh, canceling lots of shows, canceled Batwoman. Oh, nothing yeah. about you was lost. Uh, upending things at CNN and telling them to stick to the truth. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think we're going to see something similar happen with Disney. I think Disney is going to hit this tipping point where they can no longer ignore that the activists in their company are not bringing any financial gains to their shareholders. So I'm sorry, I just think this picture is funny. There's a big Mickey and there's this little guy standing there. <laughs> Hi, pal. <laughs> and please, you... please come in here. Please, the love of God, come into my park. Oh, I, 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 as I understand, the parks are pretty packed right yeah, now. Yeah, so. they are. I don't get it, but they are. Whatever. We'll see. We'll see what happens. I'm, inflation, that's another thing, too. You know, I mean, again, back to why the stock is down. It's not just the Florida situation. Uh, inflation, people are not going to have discretionary no. income to spend Five to ten thousand dollars on a five day vacation. I think or... it's gonna get worse. Like I'm seeing at the stores prices are going through the roof. Like I know I was at Aldi's today and prices are like way higher than they were when I was there like uh, a week ago. Yeah, I noticed that too. Of uh, some of the grocery stores. And okay, so here's a th before we before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more yes. pop culture news, views, and rants. Guys, over two hundred and sixty six thousand subs. Thank you for the support. We do talk a lot about Disney having worked in and around the company for a number of years. Uh, go out to piratesandprincesses.net for objective Disney news. So we have multiple businesses. Yes. And some of those businesses exist in the real world and yes. not, not online. And some of those businesses require supplies. Right. And uh, today I actually met one of the uh, delivery drivers to pick up some supplies for one of those physical businesses. And I asked him how things were going. And he said, uh, not too good. And he said that what is happening is that uh, they are the first line to see the supply chain dry Issues, up. Yeah. yeah. And he said, we're not shipping nearly as much as we used to just a couple of weeks ago. And he's like, your order and like one other order are the only two I have to deliver today. And usually this truck is completely full. I'm like, that's not good. And I told him about uh, the situation we were having with, uh, you know, on the comic book side of things. You know, I talked to the, uh, the the printer that handles our comic books and they said, you know, last week that it would be four to six months to get books printed mm -hmm. when before it was like one to two months mm -hmm. to get books printed. So we're starting to see the supply chain issues pop up again. We had a couple of good months and now here, here we go again. Yeah. So I think what's going to happen is it's going to negatively impact a lot of businesses which is going to negatively impact their bottom line, which means there's not going to be any free money for Mickey. There's going to be a lot of things going up in price and mm -hmm. people you know, aren't going to have the money. I think they're going to see a lot of cancellations. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. I think that this is, you know, if, <laughs> if you've got one thing you can cut loose, it's going to be your Disney vacation when, mm. when you can barely pay your mortgage and barely pay your bills and barely buy food. Um, but this is in the Wall Street Journal. Had a friend send it over that Disney's clash with Florida has CEOs on alert. The state's pushback against the company shows the risks executives 
make in front. Now, I mean, if they start going political? Yeah. Okay. And it, it's really interesting. Um, they try to make a case for it. Like, well, you know, sometimes we just have to make sure that, you know, we kind of pick our battles and, and we kind of prep our employees for it. But my takeaway from this is you know, a lot of executives were seeing with that, that group that was led by the uh, Bank of America. And they're starting to realize like, you cannot go hard in the paint on politics because either side of the aisle, because you're going to piss off the other 50%, mm -hmm. you know? So if you want to sell to everybody, you're going to have to make sure that you're, you know. And when they're like, oh, well, we have to, because we're CEO and it's expected. You know, no, it's not actually, you know, people don't, like, I don't need Disney to tell me what you know is morally good or bad i just want disney to like I i'm gonna go there to ride rides you know i guess their shows tell you but i'm just saying like some of these companies like mcdonald's i don't need mcdonald's to tell me what's morally you know good or you know right or wrong i just want to eat a burger you know what i yeah. mean it's just you know um but they said yeah many companies have vocal employees and in recent years they, recent years recent years like the last activists, five years the activists they push bosses to take public stands on social and political issues. The activists. Yep. Florida's pushback against Disney has raised the stakes. The number one concern CEOs have is, when should I speak out on public issues, said Bill George, uh, former chairman and CEO of Medtronic PLC. Uh, now he works at, at Harvard, a uh, senior fellow at Harvard Business School. As one CEO said to me, I want to speak out on social issues, but I don't want to get involved in politics, which I said under my breath, that's not possible. Uh, some executives might be relieved. The old idea that CEOs should focus on shareholder returns and stay out of politics lingers in some corporate suites, even in a politicized age of public social media discussion and more activist workforces. Which I think is going to end soon. If the, if the Twitter thing does come to pass, yeah. I think we're going to see some changes because uh, that's ground zero for this bullshit. Yeah. And the media is in the media, they keep getting sold off and they're drying up because they've been ground zero for this bullshit. Now CNN stick to, to facts. I think there's going to be a change. Yeah. So basically the takeaway from this is going to be don't be Disney. Um, you know, you think about this, the, the pendulum swing, which we've talked about just in the last couple of months. I mean, we've had BuzzFeed and Vice are in a really bad place right now. Uh, the changing of the guard at CNN. David Zaslav is coming in and gutting Warner Brothers and Discovery. We've got Netflix cratering. Elon Musk buying Twitter, making fun of Netflix on Twitter. Right, but they're also going to take the they're going to take the Twitter and they're going to get rid of they're going to they're going to um, verify people. So you're yeah, not going to no. have the the echo chamber bot echo chamber. I think what we're going to see is we're going to see that a lot of this outrage, you know, when these employees are supposedly pushing their uh, their bosses to get into activism. Mm -hmm. A lot of this is is coming from a very, very, very small minority. Right, of which people. is why they don't want they don't want Twitter to be sold. This is why they don't want to lose that power because they're they have this like you know it's like the shadow. It's this little mouse that's casting this huge shadow, and that gives them power. They don't want the light to be shine on, shine on that to show it's just a little mouse. You know. Yep. Um, executives say they've learned to monitor issues that could consume public attention and increase pressure for some response. Some use employee affinity groups to help flag potentially troublesome issues. I wouldn't because they're good because they, because there's these groups that they're out actually out there trying to find things because that's, they, it, it, that's their job. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Your job is to go find problems. You're going to find problems if you're out there looking for problems. That, Not little molehill. Yeah, that's exactly what's going to happen. I mean, they, they bring these, you know, it's like sensitivity readers. It's like sensitivity readers, their their entire job is to look for problems. <laughs> their entire job is to get offended for you. To get offended for you, right? So we get offended so you don't have to. Pretty much. And, and you know, Disney, they did hire some outside firm to come in and do an audit of their attractions and their, their old media and stuff like that. And, of course, they're going to find problems because if they came in, they said, eh, this is fine. You know, then nobody else is going to hire them, right? They're not right. going to pay them. And it's like anything. If you go looking for something, you're going to find it. It might not even be there, but you're going to find it because that's your job to find it. Yeah. It said staying silent has its own risks, too. Disney initially declined to take a public stance against the Florida bill, and they got rid of they the guy who have, told them to, They should have stayed silent. You know, uh, and they talk about that banning uh, classroom instruction on sexual orientation and gender identity through third grade. Uh, Disney CEO Bob Chapek told employees he didn't want the company to become a political football. Too late. Well, then he, then he just punted it across the field. <laughs> he did. Uh, they took it from him, Charlie Brown style. Yeah, they did. They did. He even handed it to them. He had a video. I'm turning this over now to the Reimagine Tomorrow group. Yeah. And he literally handed them the football and said, here you go. What a pussy. 
<laughs> I mean, seriously, are you the boss, Bob, or what? Are you the boss or what? That sparked an outcry from some employees and Disney reversed course and spoke out. And now there's a it. bunch of other employees that are screaming the other way. Yeah, they said that. They said that they're, they're Republican employees, conservative employees that are angry too. And this is a no-win situation. So the so best thing to do is not to play. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, really at the end of the day, they're going to have to answer to the stockholders and be like, how? Well, they're going to come, what, come the 11th. How did you wipe out two years, two years of gains? You guys were flying high just a couple of months ago. Mm -hmm. What the hell are you doing? And I, I can almost guarantee if this trend continues, Bob Chapek is going to be gone at the end of next year, if not sooner, because they already ousted the PR guy. Mm -hmm. you know? He was there like, like four months, not even four months. Yeah. They and people are like, him. well, he probably got fired because he announced the opening date for the wrong opening date for Guardians of the Galaxy that, that leak. And he did he for the for the cosmic rewind attraction. Mm -hmm. And he did. I didn't forget. I just don't think that was a, a offense big enough to be fired for. And that was also months ago. Yeah. Yeah, that was stupid. Um, I just think this is this is I, I can't believe they actually have to spell this out for. For companies, but uh, the new CNN boss, again, brought in by David Zaslav, mm -hmm. um, says we need to focus on the truth and says viewers have lost trust. Well, yeah, because they want the truth, not not this new, what what they call our Dolores Umbridge <laughs> chick that's yeah. supposed to be like the, 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 the Ministry of Truth, which is a very scary thing because the only places I could think of that used to do that kind of stuff are places that you probably don't want to, you know, become. The gulag. Um, but I'm just like, you know... People do want truth. They want to be. They want to trust the media, but they can't because they've been lied to so many times. And it comes out later that they believed one thing and it turned out to be something else because of the media. Um, and then they had that one person telling people, "Well, we'll we, you know, we'll tell you what the truth is." Basically. So this is coming from the new boss at CNN, and I actually, if they do this, I can respect it. And again, this is part of that. If they if. do it. Part of that pendulum swing, uh, he said, too many people have lost trust in the news media. I think we can be a beacon in regaining that trust by being an organization that exemplifies the best characteristics of journalism, fearlessly speaking truth to power, challenging the status quo, questioning groupthink, yeah. and educating viewers and readers with straightforward facts and insightful commentary while facts. Al always being respectful of different viewpoints. Facts, not you know, what your feelings and facts, like actual facts, not, I want to see actual facts, not, you know, Twitter facts or Facebook facts or media, you know, a lot of these other media outlets facts. Cause we've seen how many outlets get sued and lost because they, they ran with things that weren't factually based. Yep. Uh, speaking of based, uh, Lick was handpicked by David Zaslav. And this is what Zavlav, Zaslav said. He said that he wants CNN to focus on facts and set itself apart from cable news industry that has been monopolized by advocacy networks. Yes, that's what we need to do. We want the truth. Uh, if we can get to that, we can have a civilized society. And without it, if it all becomes advocacy, we don't have a civilized no. society. So that's that's crazy that uh, you know they're trying to roll it back. Again, the pendulum is swinging back to middle, I think Disney is going to take the brunt of, I mean, it's so weird. All these other companies are rolling it back and Disney is going harder in the paint. Well, yeah, I know it's weird, but I was just thinking too about how other countries, you know, we've come for decades that America's come down on them for being like propaganda machines. Mm -hmm. And that's all that, that they're becoming now is this yeah. one giant propaganda machine. And it's, and it's a, it's a concerning thing. Yeah, it is uh, very concerning. So what we'll see if the truth is actually the truth. The truth or, is out there. Or the state approved truth. We'll, we'll, right, we'll right. <laughs> but uh, either way, people are going to hold Disney's feet to the fire. Uh, shareholders. People for are sure. not happy no, about not. a lot of things at Disney right now. There's a lot of things going on. It is like a perfect storm of bullshit. And people are like, it's time to take out the, the bullshit. Time to shovel that shit. I think what's what's going to happen is if there is a shift at Disney, they're gonna they're gonna get rid of people and just be like, oh, because of the economic downturn, we had to fire Reimagine Tomorrow. Whoopsie doopsie. Yeah. We had to. They're not it. going to because he's too afraid. Because he apparently is is too afraid of this the, this vocal minority. You know, and most people just like you know stay in the center. You don't you know you don't. Why is Disney being political? Anyway, we're gonna wrap this one up. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye. Now he's just tasty, delicious, rotten flesh meat, which I can consume. Don't read into it too much. Just like our museum, the cafe, it's open to brew through, eager to serve.
I don't think this was in the show. Run, 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 run. Oh, you got splatted. No. Oh, wait, oh, wait, oh she was begging and what? you kicked her in the face. I don't care. Hey guys, Squid King here, and today we're in a- Not girl boss, not girl boss at all. She is not a material girl. She is not. Oh, it's Christmas time here in your mom. Nobody wants to join your mom. What? Like I can't even cook kid cuisine right. I would last about two minutes with Gordon Ramsay. What? Where is he? He's hiding. He's hiding from you. He better. Oh my god, you got the axe. Walker, does this look like Steven Universe? Let me punch him. Well, I'm just here for the wax. Okay. Ah! Right where you belong. Get in the dirt. Well, that was a combination of events I probably shouldn't have put together. Anyways, let's open this bottle too. Chica Pinata. Is that official? Oh, no. There's a bootleg. Hello. Hey guys, it's Diamond Tool. Let's make a farm. Like and subscribe and buy my merch. I mean, while you're here, you guys should like really like and subscribe and buy our merch, all of which we have. <laughs> that is true. You can't run them carrying trash. And you can get away with one F-bomb per PG-13 movie. Oh, I wish I'd yeah. known that sooner. Yeah. All right, so we're gonna wrap this effort up. Yes. <laughs>